Hello and welcome back to Stationary Dev. Today we are go have another 2022 uh, video, and this one is covering basically my favorite acquisitions for 2022. So we, I'll have some fountain pen acquisitions and some ink acquisitions for 2022. Um, the list is in no particular order, um, and they are also the only the things that I have used in 2022 so i do have some ink samples and other things that i bought that i haven't actually tried um in pens yet but so there could be some gems there um but they cannot make this list because i haven't i haven't used them um so so they they can't make this one so uh, moving on we'll start with inks because um I, I try to not buy a lot of inks because i already have more that i'll use in a lifetime but I did buy two that I have used so far that I really, really like. Um, and if you have been watching some of my other videos, they probably aren't going to be a surprise to you too much. The first one is a brown. Um, and it is from Robert Oster. This was actually my first ink from Robert Oster. I don't have any other Robert Oster inks, but I know they're great inks. Um, so I figured it was time to pick one up, and I picked this one up. Uh, for Fountain Pen Day from Van Ness Pens. And it's also, as you can see back here, a Van Ness exclusive ink that Robert Oster just makes for Van Ness Pens. You can only get at Van Ness Pens. Uh, Robert Oster is an Australian ink maker. Uh, makes a ton of different colors and really solid inks all around. But this one is the Van Ness Charred Hickory. And... I think they also have a shimmering version of this one as well, um, but I just I don't I'm not too into shimmering inks. But um, for this one, it's right up my alley. Just a nice brown. So I could do a quick swatch real quick. So reasons why I like this one, it is a interesting brown. It it it's different than other browns that I have in my collection. So it sort of stands out. I like the name. It's a very evocative uh, name. Charred hickory. Um, it brings you know smells and you know visuals into play and and so i really like that that uh name and i think the ink performs really well i've had it in my visconti homo sapiens and i have no complaints about the ink so far uh so we'll do a quick little swab and i'll do a quick little writing sample because i do have it still inked in a pen and i've been impressed with uh you know robert oster so far i had no reason you know, to suspect otherwise, but, um, you know, they're great inks. I need to add some more to my collection here. Um, so this one, as you can see, it's a brown. I don't think it's a basic brown. I think it, it goes down lighter. Um, it does have some shading and then it dries. I, I would say kind of more redder, like a woody red, um, to it. So you can kind of see on this side it'll be a little bit drier and then over here you'll see how it how it dries there and then like i said i do have this still inked in my very lovely one of my favorite pens ever my visconti homo sapiens and it has been a dream to write with so i'll do just a quick writing sample so you can see that as well so we have um Let's do like a little scribble. We have Robert Oster and Venice Chard Hickory. And this is just a, it's a wet fine nib, so you're not gonna see tons of ink on the page, but it but it is wet, so you will see a little bit. And you can probably see already how it's starting to dry. Um, starting to dry darker than it kind of went down and it turns to that reddish orange very woody brown so like I said lives up to its name moving on to my next ink and the only other ink that I put have for my favorite ink acquisitions for the year also another one that I bought uh, from Van S and on fountain pen day so I got a little bit of help with that order and it is Ackerman Delftsblau. This is the second Ackerman ink that I have. And this is one that I've had on my list for a long, long time. 
uh, pretty much ever since it came out to, to order because I just love blue inks. I like that uh, lighter, sort of like light blue, kind of purpley blue almost. Uh, but it's a blue that's supposed to um, be evocative of, you can see like blue on, on china plates and, and cups and stuff. The box is really cool as well. There's the box you can see. Um, and it has that that sort of motif of that like China blue. And I think it's a great ink. I've, I've held off because I have a ton of blue inks. Blue is like my favorite, one of my favorite colors of inks. So I have a ton of blue inks. I couldn't really justify getting another blue ink, especially another almost basic, but it's not basic um, blue ink. But I'm so glad I bought this one. It's it's absolutely winner. It's already making its way up my lists for favorite blues. So we'll do a quick sample. It's in the Ackerman bottle, so it has a marble up top. So we'll just tip it and get some ink at the top so we can swatch it. And as uh, you'll see as this goes down, it's a lovely writer. It's a lovely ink. You can use it in pretty much any situation. It is a little bit on the, the lighter side or maybe unsaturated side, but it is, it's still vivid somehow. If that makes sense. It's like a vivid unsaturated ink. It's got, it'll have lots of shading. If you use it in a, I'd say like a medium nib and up, you'd, you'd see lots of shading in this ink. But so far in my experience, it's very dependable very comfortable to write with and it's it's beautiful it's still kind of even though it's a, a more subdued blue it still pops off the page a little bit and i actually have this one inked in my uh, gravitas del white delrin pen and so we can get a quick writing sample of this as well this is and this is an extra fine nib so it won't show the shading as much um, but you can still see the ink here. Ackerman Dope Blau with the W. Just a really dependable but beautiful. I find it to be like a really calming shade. If I need, you know, maybe if I'm writing something, you know, calming that can you know, calm me down or just relaxing. I can reach for this blue for sure. Uh, so you'll see those two as they dry. And we'll move on to my pens. So my favorite pen acquisitions for the year. I bought more pens than ink, which I, I guess is a good thing. I don't know. Uh, starting out, one of my favorite fountain pen purchases this year. And I think it was probably my first fountain pen purchase this year. I, I held off for most of the year on buying fountain pens. Um, until I got to the Dallas Pen Show and saw this one. I had never seen it before. Um, I, I wasn't really aware of this pen, but when I saw it, I just fell in love with it. And this pen, let me get the cap on, is the Platinum 3776, so it's a 3776 underneath, but it is an Arushi Makie pen. And I believe this motif is called Sansui. And uh, basically it's it's islands. You can see islands on there with trees, boats, and, and waves. And it's got a sunset up here at the top there. So you can see the sun. And, and this is an Arushi pen. So it's my first Arushi pen. I didn't even actually know it was like an actual Arushi pen. I obviously knew it was a Makie pen. But I didn't know it was a Arushi pen when I bought it. But then I later found out it was a Arushi pen. So it's my first Arushi pen. And you, it does feel different than a standard um, Platinum 3776. So that Arushi does add something to the feel of this pen. Um, and then the artwork, of course, is absolutely beautiful with the detail. Hopefully you can see that coming through on the camera. Those islands, all of it's hand done. And it kind of sticks up out of the pen under, under the lacquer. And you can feel the, feel the uh, design 
under the lacquer, but it's an absolutely beautiful pen. I love just looking at this pen. It feels good to write with this pen. Um, just look at all those dots there, those golden dots. Little rocks that they put in there. It's just amazing pen, and it feels great to write with. It's a it's a platinum 3776, so I knew I would already love the writing of it. It's a fine nib, which is one of my favorites from Platinum. And uh, yeah, it writes like a dream. It feels great, and it feels special to write with. So that's one of my favorite fountain pen acquisitions for 2022. Another one was one, uh, kind of an impulse buy, but one that I needed to needed to buy, I felt. And it's another Platinum. I do have a video of these ones as well. Um, and it is the Platinum President fountain pen. So this is the Platinum President, which is uh, now a discontinued pen, although you can still buy them. And usually you can get them for a really good price um, since they're no, since they're discontinued. I think they're trying to clear them out so that the price is really, really good compared to what they were retailing at when they were, uh, you know, full price. This one just happens to be in the burgundy. I got two of these. I got a burgundy red one here, and then I also got a black one. Uh, this one has a uh, fine nib, and then my black one has an ultra extra fine nib. And I just like the fine nib a little bit better than the ultra extra fine. The ultra extra fine is good if you like architect um, kind of nib, because it has that feel. It's very, 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 very thin, hair thin on the downstroke, but then the cross stroke is a little wider. Um, which doesn't, it's good, I like using it, but it doesn't suit my handwriting as well as just the regular old fine. So, um, beautiful pen, it has a unique clip, it's a little bit bigger in, in size, a little bit wider than the 3776, which I think is a step up and helps it as well. And you also get a, I guess, more premium nib, it's an 18 karat president nib. This is the same nib that they use on their sort of flagship Arushi model, the Azumo. And so it was just nice that you can have this nib in a, in a much cheaper, uh, much more cost-effective pen. And this is the 18 karat gold as opposed to the 14 karat that the, the regular platinum is. And it's a fine, I can tell a difference between like this uh, 18 karat fine and then this 3776. Uh, 14 karat fine. I can tell a difference in the writing. Um, just different. It's not necessarily better or worse. Um, but it is just a gorgeous pen. It feels great in the hand. It's a good size. I just, I just really, really loved writing with this, this one. So it had to make my list. I like, I love platinum pens. It's a shame that these ones are um, going out of, out of production. But I had to pick one up, and I'm glad I did. All right, moving right along. My most recent, I guess, uh, acquisition, and my most recent that I've gotten um, purchase is this. Then you saw a sneak peek of it. It's the Gravitas Pens White Delrin Fountain Pen. It's based on their Sentry model, which is sort of like their one of their main models. And um, you can see it's pretty plain. No super, no branding, no crazy colors. Um, Anything like that on the outside, you do get a little bit of styling. You get a cones on either tip there. But the, the real magic in this pen is the material and the writing of this pen. Uh, the material is Delrin, which is an engineered plastic. And I have a video of this, a full review of this pen if you're interested in that. But it just feels interesting. It feels amazing. It doesn't feel like anything else in my collection. It is absolutely 100% just well built, well engineered. They're, they're machined by, you know, I guess machined by hand if you want to call that, but they're machined one at a time by one guy uh, in Ireland, ben, ben Walsh, and you can tell in just the, the craftsmanship of this pen. Um, it has a stainless steel section and an amazing uh, Yovo extra fine nib that's just super smooth. I've never had any problems. Um, it, and the, the 
kicker is it's a plastic pin, but it's very strong plastic, so you don't have to worry about chunking this in your pocket or chunking in a book bag or something like that. You can even eyedropper it because it's you know a resistant plastic. It's not gonna do anything to the pit to the pin or to the plastic. You can eyedropper it. And the other thing is because it's plastic and this is like a solid steel section, is the balance on this thing is amazing. All of the weight is right here in the section, right in your fingers, and it just disappears in your hand. I could write for for hours and hours with this pen and just feel completely comfortable. It just disappears in your hand, and it's an amazing, amazing experience. If you haven't tried a, Del, uh, a Delrin pen, or if I guess if you haven't tried uh, Gravitas, or I think they're they're, I think you need to check them out. Check, go to their website, check out the pens. They're affordable. They're good prices for what they are. They're all solidly built. They're hand checked. All the nibs are checked. All the pens are checked before they're sent out by Ben Walsh himself. They're, they're great, 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 great pens. You might have to wait on shipping. Shipping takes a little bit just because it's international shipping. But other than that, there's no complaints from me with this pen. And so it has to make the list. The last pen on my list for pens, favorite acquisitions for 2022, is one that I debated not putting on this list. Um, but now, but I'll explain why and why it is now on my list, and that is this, the Peniter Le Grande Bellezza Rocco fountain pen. First things first with this pen, it's stunning. It is absolutely beautiful resin. It's one of my favorite, you know, acrylics or favorite resins that I have in my collection. It's supposed to mimic sort of that celluloid look. It's a very deep, and, uh, you know, I could look at it all day. The aesthetics of it are great. The form of it is great. Um, it feels great in the hand. The cap is magnetic, which is just super convenient to just have a magnetic cap um, that you could just throw on and pull off. It's a piston filler, so it holds lots of ink and and uh, has a you know ink window and everything, so you can see the ink levels. But the problem I had with it, it, it is it was a extremely, basically ridiculously dry writer. Like it barely was putting out ink. And, uh, and, and then of course it was easily drying out when it was capped. Um, so it, it, it kept drying out. It was super dry when I was writing with it. I wasn't having a good, you know, writing experience. I've tried two different inks in this pen. Um, the ink that's currently in there is an Orochizuku ink. So I know it's not the ink or anything. Um, so what I did was I ended up, uh, taking a brass shim and just flossing, you know, something you can do to help a, a dry riding pin. Maybe the tines are too tight or maybe there's something, you know, in there from the factory. And I just flossed in between those tines with a brass shim. And that did a couple things. So first of all, um, it let me know the tines aren't too tight back here, but I think they get a little bit tighter at the tip. So I really kind of flossed that out. And the second thing was, it was weird when I was flossing it, I got to about the top of the scroll work there, which kind of correlates to the end of the feed, uh, right, here, right where my fingernail is there. That's about where I got when the brass shim would just stop and it wouldn't, it would just get stuck right there. And so I, I really kind of focused on that area. And something else weird happened when I did that as well. If I flip this over, you can probably see, maybe I can get it in focus here. You can probably see at the tip of this pen, some of the black coating for the nib came off of the pen. It flaked off when I was flossing the nib on the side there and then underneath and on the tip of one of the tines just came off. Um, now that could have been because I was flossing, but what I believe it is, is it was some problem with the, um, with the, the coating on the nib. Somehow the coating maybe got, you know, gunked in between the tines or something like that. And it was preventing the ink from flowing to the tip of the pen. Because after I flossed this with a brass shim and after that flake came off, it's been a wet rider. 
it has been absolute smooth and a joy and i haven't had to put any pressure on this thing to get it to to write like it should and it's been a great writer since then um hasn't i haven't experienced it drying out while capped anymore you can see there um that it's 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 writing wet it's writing more true to size it's writing smoother because it's wetter um And yeah, it just writes great now. So that's why it now goes on my list for favorite acquisitions because now it writes like a dream. But I believe there was some sort of manufacturing problems with the coating, uh, the black coating on the nib that was causing some something to happen at the tines here at the end of the feed um, that kept the ink from flowing. So once that little flake came off and once I kind of worked out that into that, those tines there, it's been writing like a dream and that was my only qualm about this pen is how incredibly dry writing it was that was drying out with the cap on and uh and so now that that's fixed it's it's a dream to write with so that's why it, it gets on my list but it does have a caveat that it took a little bit of elbow grease to get going all right so I've gone on too long about my favorite pen and ink acquisitions for 2022, uh, but you can leave a comment below and let me know your favorite uh, pen and ink that you picked up this year. Also, if you like this video and want to see more like it, please feel free to like and subscribe. It's quick, it's free, it's easy, takes zero time, and uh, let you know when I release new videos as well, which uh, every week I'm coming out with new content. Uh, so until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.